Hi everyone, this lesson is on the side effects of gabapentin use. Before we talk about the side effects, let's talk about what gabapentin is and why we use it. So gabapentin is also known as Neurontin or Graylees. It is a gamma aminobutyric acid or GABA analog. So GABA is a neurotransmitter. It's actually an inhibitory neurotransmitter. It's the classic inhibitory neurotransmitter. And this is where we get the name gabapentin from. So it is a GABA analog, meaning that it acts like GABA. And again, GABA is that primary inhibitory neurotransmitter. So the mechanism of action, just briefly here, is that gabapentin binds to a receptor on a neuron and ultimately leads to inhibition of neuronal functioning. So because the system's regulating neurotransmitters like GABA and others like norepinephrine are highly complex, gabapentin can lead to a host of changes in neurotransmitter levels and functions. We'll talk a bit about those as we go through the side effects in the upcoming slides. Now gabapentin is going to be utilized for particular conditions. Some of them include partial seizures and post-herpetic neuralgia. Post-herpetic neuralgia is a nerve pain that occurs after a shingles infection. So you can imagine that these conditions are going to be helped by gabapentin's ability to inhibit neuronal functioning. Now, there are many off-label uses, and this is where we're going to see majority of conditions that often are associated with gabapentin use. Some of these include restless leg syndrome, fibromyalgia, diabetic neuropathy, insomnia, and irritable bowel syndrome. So again, all of it has to do with inhibition of neuronal functioning. Now the topic of this lesson is that gabapentin use can lead to a variety of mild and or severe side effects, and we're going to talk about those as we go through this lesson. So we're going to talk about side effects from the most common to the least common. So one of the most common side effects of gabapentin use is drowsiness. Now we can see drowsiness, or what we would call somnolence, being very, very tired, or a feeling of being sedated may occur with gabapentin use. This is again one of the more common side effects of gabapentin, and it occurs in up to 20% of gabapentin users, so very common side effect. Another one is going to be fatigue. Now this is related to drowsiness. So feeling tired, fatigued can be again a common side effect of gabapentin use, and it itself also occurs in up to 20% of gabapentin users. Some other side effects that can occur include dizziness. So dizziness can involve presyncope, so feeling faint or lightheaded, with the possibility of syncope in some cases. Syncope is a fainting episode, and this can be relatively common as well. It has been estimated to occur in up to 20% of gabapentin users. We can also see something called ataxia. So ataxia is going to be poor or reduced ability to control muscles. So it is essentially being clumsy. So this is going to be often mild, and it may involve imbalance while walking. And this can occur in 10 to 13% of patients. Another side effect that can occur includes diplopia. So diplopia is double vision. So this often is going to be mild. It may be only temporary and it itself can occur in up to 5 to 10 percent of patients. Another eye finding we can see with gabapentin use is something we call nystagmus. So nystagmus is going to be rapid involuntary eye beats toward one side. So if you were to get the patient to follow your finger with their eyes without moving their head and you get them to go one direction, you get them to go the other direction, they may have these small jerking movements of the eye toward one direction or the other direction. This itself can occur in up to 5-10% to of gabapentin users as well. We can also see issues with amblyopia, another eye condition. This is lazy eye. So it's essentially poor vision or blurry vision in one eye. Rarely both eyes can be affected. And if this does occur, it may be temporary or may cause issues for the patient. And this can also occur in 1-5% to of patients. Mood changes can also be something that can be noted in gabapentin use as well. So mood changes like depression and anxiety or nervousness may occur with gabapentin use. This can itself contribute to low energy and fatigue, and it may be due to gabapentin-related central nervous system or CNS neuronal inhibition. And this is estimated to affect 1-5% to of gabapentin users as well. We can also see issues with tremor in some patients, so muscle tremor or twitching may occur. So tremors can 
occur due to alterations in regulation of other neurotransmitters, including dopamine. So because neurotransmitters don't operate mutually exclusive to one another, if you're affecting one, you can often affect other ones. So this can be a possible side effect in gabapentin use, and this may occur in 6 to 10% of users. We can also see back pain occurring, so mild back pain may occur, and this is estimated to occur in 1 to 5% of patients. Constipation is also another possible side effect of gabapentin use. So constipation is going to be reduced frequency of bowel movements and or increased consistency of stool. So if we were to actually look at the Bristol stool chart, so type 4 is going to be normal stool and the types that essentially have less water content, so type 1, type 2, and type 3 are going to be what we would call constipation. So What's going to often happen is that the consistency of the stool is going to become very hard and firm, or the patient is going to have less bowel movements. This has also been estimated to affect 1 to 5% of patients. And then we can also see weight gain in some patients as well. Usually it's going to be mild weight gain, and it can be due to gabapentin-induced changes in metabolism and or appetite. So again, this is often going to occur in 1 to 5% of patients as well. Some other side effects can include increased appetite, so appetite can be increased when taking gabapentin. This is due to gabapentin-induced alterations in the gastrointestinal tract. So GABA effects can occur in the gastrointestinal system. And this will also contribute to weight gain as well. And this is estimated to affect 1% to 5% of patients as well. Dyspepsia is something else that can occur. So dyspepsia is indigestion or heartburn. This is due to gabapentin-induced gastrointestinal changes again. And it's estimated to occur in 1% to 5% of patients. We can also see some other possible issues in certain gabapentin users, and some of these include dysarthria. So dysarthria is difficulty articulating speech, so they may have some mild issues with speaking, and this can occur in approximately 1-5% to of patients. We can also see issues with dry mouth as well, so reduced activity of salivary glands can occur, and this can lead to dry mouth, and this can occur in, again, 1-5% to of patients. We can also see issues with hyperkinesia. So hyperkinesia is going to be excessive activity of body parts, particularly the muscles. This can go along with those tremors we talked about before, and this can occur in approximately 3 to 5% of patients. And then we can also see myalgias. Myalgias are muscle aches and pains, and this also can occur in 1 to 5% of patients. And then some other side effects that can occur include peripheral edema. So peripheral edema is swelling of different body parts, particularly the extremities like the arms and the legs. And again, this is going to occur in 1 to 5% of patients. And then pruritus can also be something that can be found in gabapentin use. So pruritus is itching sensation. It may be generalized itching, so you may feel itchy in different parts of your body. And again, this can also occur in approximately 1 to 5% of patients. And finally, some other side effects that may look like an infection in gabapentin users include pharyngitis. So pharyngitis is a sore throat. This can occur in 1 to 5% of patients as well. And rhinitis may also occur. And rhinitis is going to be a runny nose or sneezing, congestion. And again, this can also occur in an estimated 1 to 5% of patients who use gabapentin. So again, most of these side effects are going to be very rare. The ones we talked about earlier on in this lesson are going to be the ones that are more common, like drowsiness, fatigue, and maybe some dizziness. So those are going to be the ones that are most commonly going to occur, while these other ones we've talked about throughout the later part of this lesson are going to be less likely to occur. So if you want to learn more about other medication side effects, please check out my lessons on those topics. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thanks so much for watching and hope to see you next time.